broken, I will shelter you. Little ears, if you will listen, you will hear the truth. You will hear the truth. It's a big world, baby. Big enough to dream. You're not too small to do great things. Well, twice a year we have a child dedication service, and uh, this is one of those times of the year. And I can just tell you, through the years, I think I've participated in about 36 of these. Um, some of you, because I know you've been here a while, have probably participated in about 56 of these. And yet they never get, we never get tired of it. Uh, number one, because Children are so stinking adorable, so it just, there's no way for us to get tired of this. It, it's one of those significant moments, and uh, this is a significant moment, uh, where we have parents standing before you. We've, we've had 10 participate today, two in this service, who are doing several things today. Number one, they're confirming their love for God, that God is first in their life, and their love for Him is sincere. Number two, they're clarifying ownership that these children belong to the Lord and they are stewards of these children that God has given them. And three, they are committing themselves to raise these children in the truth and the grace of Jesus, that they will spiritually invest and spiritually engage their kids. And the reason that's so important is because their time with these kids will be so short. How many of you have children over 18 years of age and you would raise your hand and say, it goes by fast? It goes by really fast, and it does. You know, um, Ted Cunningham came and did a marriage date night for us. And uh, he said that one of the things they did in their church at one time is they gave their families um, a jar of marbles. There were 936 marbles in the jar, representing a week of a child's life from the time they're born until they're 18. And they encouraged their parents every week to take out a marble. You know, the Bible says to number our days because it goes by so fast. And what I liked about their jars is at the top it said control, and at the bottom it said influence. You know, when our kids are young, we exhibit a lot of control. If we want the child to stand here, here you go. And they don't always stay, but, you know, here you go. If we want a child to get in the car seat, we put them in a car seat. But when they get older, as in their teenage years, we, we begin to in, exhibit influence, not control, which... It's kind of funny because as you're taking marbles out the jar, when you lose all your marbles, you lose all control. You know, there's that too, and that's kind of funny. But this is a significant moment for these parents, and, um, and I, I know that for these parents to stand before us, they're making a pretty important commitment. In fact, I'm going to turn and face, oh, let me introduce our families first. Let me introduce who's standing before us today. So right here, um, we've got, this is Oliver Paul Anderson, and this is the son of Jay and Sarah Anderson, and he's looking sharp, and I don't know if you can see, it's, it's kind of light hair, but the, there's a little bit of a mohawk, just right here, tiny, it's awesome, love it. And then we've got Journey Noel Jensen, uh, this is the daughter of Bryce and Kelsey Jensen, and also Sister Jovi, who's been through this process before, and as you can see, she's grown a little bit uh, since the, the last time. And uh, can we just applaud these families right now just for participating in this, being a part of this, we celebrate it. And I do want to talk to our families just for a moment because, you know, it was just after Christmas. It was just after Jesus was born. He was about 40 days old when Joseph and Mary took him to the temple and dedicated him to the Lord. They were doing what the law required them to do, to give their first, their best to God. And... Um, it was reminding them of what God did in the Exodus when he led his people out. They were his people. He was their God. And they, he deserved everything. He deserved their first. And that's really what you're doing today, too. You're giving your best to God. As, as parents, you're entrusting these children to the Lord. In Ephesians 6, 4, it says, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And that's what you're committing to do today. You're committing to do what Timothy's mother and grandmother did for him. A woman, a mom, and a woman, a grandmother in his life taught him God's word. It led him to God. In fact, Paul would even say to Timothy, hey, from infancy, 
you've known the holy scriptures, which were able to make you wise to salvation through faith in Jesus. He was saying, you had a mom and a grandma who taught you the scriptures, who invested in you. They laid a foundation in your life that led you to the Lord. And parents, that's what you're doing with your kids. You're making a commitment today to teach them the word of God so that when they come to an age when they can experience the full conviction of the Holy Spirit in their life, they will choose to follow Jesus, put their trust and their belief in Him. And so parents, we're challenging you today to pray with your children. Read Scripture with your children. Talk about the Lord with your kids. Worship consistently with your children. Connect them to the church, the body of Christ. Help them get connected to people in small groups. Help them learn to contribute to ministry. Help them to commit wholeheartedly to following Jesus. Because if you are doing this, it's more likely they will do this. You know, Hannah was a mom in the Old Testament who brought her son Samuel to the temple and dedicated him to the Lord. And what we learn about that is before she dedicated him to the Lord, she was dedicated to the Lord. And so parents, these commitments I'm asking you to make today is that commitment to the Lord. So I'm going to ask a series of three questions. You can simply respond by saying, we will. So parents, before this family of believers... Will you commit yourselves to bring up your children in the training and instruction of the Lord, will you? And will you dedicate yourselves to live as a godly example before them? And will you take your responsibility seriously to pray for your children regularly, bring them to church consistently, teach them God's word accurately, and when appropriate, Encourage them to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, will you? Well, praise God for that. And church, I want to ask you some questions. Because we're a church that's committed to family ministry. We're a church that's committed to reaching this next generation for Christ. We're a church that is committed to helping parents through teaching and ministry and programming and relationships to help them raise these children in Jesus. So church, I want to ask you three questions, and you can respond by saying we will. So Northside, do we as a church, do we commit ourselves to family ministry, encouraging and assisting parents and guardians and grandparents in the task of teaching and training children in God's word? Church, will we? And church... Will we be willing to give up our preferences in order to reach this next generation for Christ? Will we? And church, will we create a culture that loves, encourages, accepts, and invests in this next generation? Will we? Well, praise God for that. I want to do this real quick. If you are family, if you're connected to these couples on stage, and you're in the room right now, have any room? Will you stand too? Because when we pray, we want to pray over you as well. Uh, let's let's give it up for families right here in this room who are also in this cause and uh, investing in these kids. Let's pray together, Lord. We thank you for the gift of life and the gift of these children. We are so thrilled that these families are standing here today giving testimony that they're here to love and support these parents. We thank you that, that Lord, you're, you're working through these families to help these children connect to you and, and to other people. And, Lord, we're just grateful for that. Lord, we want to pray your blessing over them. We want to pray the blessing that the priests gave over God's people. And so, Lord, today we just pray that, Lord, you would bless them and keep them. Lord, we pray that you would make your face shine upon them and that you would be gracious to them. And Lord, we pray that you would turn your face to them and you would give them your peace and it would rest upon them. And Lord, we pray that your name would ever be on these families, that you would bless them with the knowledge of you. And that, Lord, with that knowledge, that you would give them the wisdom to apply it to parenting and grandparenting and to investing in children. And Lord, we pray you give them the strength to endure. We pray you give them the patience to leave room for God to work in the lives of these children. We pray, Father, that you would give them the courage to conquer their fears. And then, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would empower them 
to live for Jesus, to overcome the evil one, to set a good example for them to follow. We pray that their commitment to you and to one another would be a blessing for generations to come. And we ask this in the name of Jesus and all God's people say, amen. All right, you may be seated. Let's applaud our families today participating in this.